Years ago, when I was introduced to the first Zero Trust Network Access, or ZTNA, technologies, we discussed how ZTNA might someday do away, do away with traditional firewalls. I thought that was a bit of a stretch, but several years later, maybe not. Let's take a look at whether traditional firewall is really necessary in today's architecture. The answer may surprise you. Hi, I'm Steve Murphy. I'm a vice president at ARG, and while I work for ARG, this video is my own and does not represent the views or opinions of my employer. This channel is dedicated to helping IT leaders make great business decisions. So do you still use a firewall in today's environment? Well, if I were to ask 20 IT professionals whether they're using a firewall to protect their critical assets, I'd probably get 20 yeses, of course. Everyone I know is still using a traditional firewall whether an appliance on site or a virtual instance in the cloud. However, if I asked a different question, a question such as, should you treat your users behind the firewall the same as those working remotely? I think I'd get the same response. Almost all would say, yes, you should treat users behind the firewall the same as you treat users outside the firewall. Why is this? Aren't users within the secure perimeter better protected? Well. Virtually everyone today is working off of laptop platforms, right? Those machines move in and out of the secure perimeter. So yes, why not treat them the same? With many of the applications needed by today's workforce being in the cloud, uh, performance of on-site workstations is not really better inside the LAN because the applications are only accessible over the internet. Standardizing on a single security framework, regardless of the location, might make sense to your organization. Anytime we can standardize, we are usually simplifying. Simplification generally also leads to better management and therefore stronger security. Today, with many applications in the cloud, there are not as many assets to protect in the data center. Now, of course, the servers that are there still need to be protected and resources on the land cannot be randomly exposed to the public internet without some form of protection, right? Today, that's probably a firewall, but if we could start from scratch, would it be? or would we consider implementing zero trust network access instead of a traditional firewall? If we're starting from scratch, ZTNA has some distinct advantages that might just tip the scales in its favor. First, let's describe zero trust. This is gonna be brief, and I'll put a link to a more thorough description in the notes to this video. Also, what I'm going to describe is a typical ZTNA service from a ZTNA provider. I've talked about how you can implement your own ZTNA framework with tooling you probably have in place today. That would include your existing next-gen firewall. But the do-it-yourself approach is complex, requires significant maintenance, and quite honestly, most are engaging in ZTNA service providers for turnkey solutions. So in a ZTNA service provider architecture, the service provider is the first destination for all traffic. You want a service provider with a rich POP density that will be close to where your users are likely to be logging on to minimize latency. Most popular ZTNA providers have global POP deployments, so that's not really that, that much of an issue. The ZTNA service provider evaluates the client and challenges the user on a contextual basis. Is the machine corporately managed? Does it have an active endpoint protection application running? Are current patches and updates installed? And is the traffic originating from a known IP address during normal operating hours for the device, et cetera. The user, um, has the user provided accurate credentials is another query. Are they using biometrics on the device or has a hard key been provided? Additional authentication challenges might be presented if the context is out of the norm. Once the ZTNA service provider has authenticated the device, the ZTNA platform waits for the user to request a resource. Maybe they're looking to access their email or get into the CRM. Maybe they're just going to the internet or logging into a proprietary database. Regardless of the request, the ZTNA determines what resource that device and that user are allowed to access given their specific context. If their context is within normal range, then maybe they have full access to the resource. But if their context is out of the norm, such as a new IP address, time of day, or number of login attempts, anything that might indicate the user or device might not be within normal operating parameters, then additional challenges or outright restrictions can be applied. All of this takes place within the confines of the ZTNA service provider platform. No traffic is presented to the customer's network or resources until duly authorized. 
when, when authorized, a ZTNA platform can either create a connection to the resource or more likely negotiate a secure connection between the resource and the requesting device, taking the ZTNA provider out of the middle of the session. When the client requests a different resource, the authentication mechanism fire again, determining whether the user is entitled to access that resource and whether additional authentication steps are necessary based upon the context of, this, uh, of the device or the access session. This happens every time a request is made or a certain amount of time has passed, depending upon your configuration. I should mention at this time that a single sign-in integration, which is available with these various authentication parameters, if a user is authorized to access a service based upon entitlements and, pre, uh, and previous authentication, then single sign-on services work just fine, allowing the user to access those resources without additional authentication challenges. So rather than using a traditional VPN to access the corporate network and then being treated as if the user were inside the secure perimeter, the ZTNA service evaluates each resource or application access request and determines individually whether the access should be granted. In this way, the ZTNA service is never trusting the user's access request. Each request is being validated away from the network and only permitted uses are allowed. The ZTNA is great at keeping bad guys out and ensuring secure remote access to applications. In that regard, yes, if you have a fully deployed ZTNA service, you can consider the relative value of additional traditional firewalls. Maybe it's not necessary, but before you decommission those firewalls, you need to inventory what other services are being hosted. Now that your endpoints are operating more autonomously, you need to ensure that your endpoint protection solution can accommodate some of the traditional firewall activities, services such as deep packet inspection or intrusion detection and prevention, or maybe your zero trust provider fills those service gaps. A network-based firewall might be an interesting alternative to the untrusted traffic. So while you'd still have a firewall in this case, you may be saving money by reducing the throughput required without sacrificing the experience of your users to the trusted resources brokered by the ZTNA. There's a lot to think about. If you're coming up on your firewall renewal or looking for a new firewall platform and wanna talk further, feel free to reach out to me. My contact information's in the description of this video. And if you got some value out of this video, I'd appreciate a like, a thumbs up below, and thank you very much for doing that in advance. If you wanna to return to my channel in the future, the easiest way of doing that is by hitting the subscribe button. That allows you to find your way back here whenever you wish. Thanks very much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.